Even though its sales were quite modest compared to many other Final Fantasy games released around the same era, Crystal Chronicles was a very unique experience. And that was true when compared to other Final Fantasy games, but also the gaming landscape in general. Outside of The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, Crystal Chronicles stands as one of the few games that maximised the interconnectivity that existed between the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance thanks to the link cable. But this award-winning innovation also acted as a deterrent for would-be purchasers as the financial barrier to entry was placed very high. Immense Crystal Chronicles elicited two very polarising experiences. One, where a group of friends who had the prerequisite hardware and the shared time could sit down to embark on a fun and charming adventure together. And the other, where you would need to embark on that adventure alone, having only a virtual Moogle as your main companion. Both of those experiences were memorable for very different reasons. But thanks to a whole host of changes the developers have made for Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition, the game should now be much more inclusive and enjoyable for almost everyone, as opposed to just the select few. So whether you've never played Crystal Chronicles before, or you're a veteran who's looking to pick up the game again, here's everything that's changed with Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Just as a small plug though, before we begin, if you'd like to watch Lauren and myself play through the Remastered Edition, please follow us on Twitch at Lozadar. There's a link in the description below and we're hoping to begin our playthrough on Thursday the 27th of August. Now, when initial discussions were taking place about reviving this rather unique entry into the Final Fantasy franchise, there were plenty of options available to the development staff. It was Ryoma Araki who serves as the game's director and producer who had the task of deciding which route they should take, and he approached this decision by leveraging his unique perspective on the game and the unique position afforded to him by Square Enix. Unlike many other projects of a similar nature, Araki was not a member of the original development staff for Crystal Chronicles, and this has been a pretty big prerequisite for almost every previous remake or remaster in the Final Fantasy franchise. Final Fantasy III Remake, for example, was directed by Hiromichi Tanaka, the game designer of the original game, and Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age was overseen by Takashi Katano and Hiroaki Kato, who on the original were the main system and event programmer and lead production coordinator respectively. Even the recent Final Fantasy VIII Remaster was looked after by Hiroshi Harata, who was a battle programmer on the original game back in 1998, and in the most recent instance, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is helmed by Yoshinori Kitase, Tetsuya Nomura, Kazushige Nojima, and Motomo Toriyama. But even though Araki did not tick this particular box, he still had a very close connection with the game. Prior to joining Square Enix, he was also working on developing GameCube games for a competitor, and was inspired by Crystal Chronicles to the point that it served as his motivation to try and join the company. With his application successful, Araki was assigned to work on Final Fantasy XII and then Dragon Quest X, and when he was presented with the opportunity to take the helm of reimagining an older Final Fantasy game, he let it be known that Crystal Chronicles would be his game of preference. After being given the green light, Araki consulted Kazuhiko Aoki and Akitoshi Kawazu about how best to proceed. They served as the director and producer of the original game, so it would have served as a valuable source of information. And after consulting them, Araki took the decision to try and keep whatever they produced faithful to the intended experience of the original, as opposed to doing a full-on remake. But such has been the scope of Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition that the development team feel it can be considered a pseudo-remake, as numerous aspects have been enhanced well beyond the original vision. And that brings us on to the first major change, which has been the most controversial, but is also the most important as it relates to how the multiplayer experience will work. When Araki set about attempting to solve the conundrum posed by the original, where proximity to other players was a huge barrier to enjoyment, their main objective was to try and figure out how as many people as possible could get to experience the multiplayer element in the way it was intended. To do this, they felt modern technology would need to be integrated into the experience, and this means Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition will feature online multiplayer connectivity, and this will be further enhanced with cross-platform play. It means, thanks to the four available platforms the game will be releasing on, a party can consist of someone playing on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, an iOS device, and an Android device. 
Or it could easily consist of people playing on four of the same console, such as four separate Nintendo Switches. Araki explained that this was a main objective because they wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to create memories with their friends and families, even if they all had different preferences when it came to the devices they preferred playing on. This removes the original's proximity requirement from the equation, but as a consequence, the developers also decided to remove the ability to play local couch co-op, at least in the traditional sense, as they had to choose between one mode or the other. I say in the traditional sense, because within Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition, you cannot have four players playing on the same device in the same location. Instead, if you'd like to play with other people in the same location, this will all need to be done through Wi-Fi, with everyone having their own separate device, which is kind of like the original game. This decision was not taken lightly, but the original game required five screens to function in an efficient manner, and Araki felt the game didn't mesh well with local play that would restrict it to just one platform, because having four players share just one screen would have likely caused a lot of disruption due to how things like infantry management were handled. This new method will see story progress restricted to the host, but visiting players will get to keep spoils and stat enhancements gained through their progress. It has though thrown up some concerns in terms of how the story plays out, as part of the charm of the original was that everyone shared a hometown and travelled together in the same caravan. In addition to allowing for online crossplay, the development staff also created Crystal Chronicles Remastered Light Edition. This will be a free to play version of the game which allows you to experience the full game up until the end of the third dungeon. This means four people with the light version can still team up to tackle the first three dungeons to see how they like it before diving into purchasing the full game if they are happy with what they've seen. But the light version also has another advantage, as you can even connect with someone who has purchased the full game. And in this scenario, light version players can experience the entire storyline without having to spend a penny. It means if you do have a set party of four, only one person needs to purchase the game for you to experience it all together, and that is a very generous move by Square Enix that should really be commended. No matter how you choose to play though, you'll immediately notice a few changes when it comes to the game's presentation. The game's visuals, for example, have been improved to accommodate for high definition devices, and this has been done with the goal of keeping everything as faithful to the original as possible. Toshiyuki Itahana, who was the art director and character designer on the original game, had been tempted to make some aggressive tweaks for the remaster, such as redesigning all of the character classes and potential skins, but after hearing that people had close connections with their original characters, Itahana decided to instead create one new male and one new female design for each of the races. To help increase the scope in this regard though, the development team also created what they have dubbed the Mimic System. By collecting stamps, visiting Moogle houses or completing difficult dungeons, you will earn special crystals. These can then be used to change the appearance of your character to mimic the appearance of different NPCs you meet on your journey. It's not yet been revealed how many will be available, but there should be a decent number to choose from. It has been revealed though that other characters will be available to mimic via downloadable content. So far, the list is comprised of Yuri and Chalinka from Ring of Fates, King Leo and Chancellor Chime from My Life as a King, Charlotta from Echoes of Time, Mira and Beldat from My Life as a Dark Lord, and Lael from The Crystal Bearers. In order to improve other aspects of presentation, voice acting has also been recorded for every major NPC you'll meet throughout your quest, and this will play out through the game's numerous cutscenes. To date, only the Japanese voice cast has been revealed, but the English voice cast will no doubt be included in the game's credits upon launch. It has also been decided that they would make enhancements to the game's music. In the initial sense, music that was cut from the original game due to time constraints will now resurface, but Kumi Tanioka and Hidanori Iwasaki have also returned to bring their unique compositional flair to proceedings. They will be responsible for remastering some of the original music, including the game's main theme, and in addition to this, the duo will also be composing brand new tracks for the game's brand new dungeons. These new dungeons will be available to players who are seeking an even greater challenge, and there will be 13 in total. They will be grouped into three different tiers of difficulty, and the developers believe the top tier of dungeons will provide a real challenge to gamers, even if they make use of the new items and weapons.
And on that note, it's unclear how many weapons will be added into the remastered edition, but the resources required to make them will be found much easier within these new dungeons, so patience and luck will be rewarded as you venture deep to seek new riches. Via downloadable content, there will also be two additional weapon sets available. These are the Moogle set and the Ancient Sacred Treasure set. It means if you're a veteran who will be looking to embark on a new adventure, or you're a first timer who has minimal experience with Crystal Chronicles but has had their interest peaked, there is a lot to be excited for. But if you're still unsure, then definitely check out the Light Edition or check out our playthrough on Twitch. This will see the scenarios we talked about at the beginning combined, as I played through the original with three friends and Lauren has never played Crystal Chronicles before, and that should make for some fun banter. As a reminder, just check out the link in the description below if you're interested in following us. Be sure to also let us know in the comments if you're planning to pick up Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition, and please share which of the enhancements you're most looking forward to. If you enjoyed this update, then of course be sure to hit that like button and feel free to subscribe to our channel. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. A big thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, and of course, a big thanks to all of you for watching this video. I hope to see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.